Welcome to Sober Math. We've all seen string art, a staple of primary school learning and fun for kids and adults, and a simple way to produce intricate web-like patterns, some of which have mathematical properties, like this complete network. Today I want to investigate this simple template of string art and explain the algebra behind this envelope curve and derive a formula. I was able to buy this kit for $20 at Michael's Arts and Crafts, complete with refined plywood nails and string. I numbered the corner nail as zero and spaced the nails evenly apart in two rows at right angles. And you can see where I'm going. Yep, this outlines the X and Y axes. For this crude example, I put the strings as an ordered rainbow of color. But what I'm really after is the curve we would get if we had lots of strings. Sure, I could tell you the answer, but perhaps you'd like to pause the video and try to solve for it yourself. Any luck? Well, no problem. I didn't succeed on my first try either. Today I want to show you how this curve is a parabola using ordinary high school algebra and a hint of pre-calculus. We'll also make use of some symmetry. To save time in my videos, I'll advance through some steps quickly and skip some steps entirely, such as simplifying. I prefer to focus on important details related to concepts. Do your best to follow along and don't worry if you don't get all the details. Just have fun and feel free to check my work. So a word on symmetry. Usually you have to wait until a course on quantum mechanics or group theory to even bother with symmetry. Well, today it's a vital ingredient. Rotated this way, it's easy to see our string art has bilateral symmetry. The left side looks like the right side. Rotate around 45 degrees, and this means that the X and Y are interchangeable. In practice, this means that for any point in our pattern, if we switch the X and Y coordinates, the corresponding point must also be in our pattern. Furthermore, take this equation for the yellow string. If we swap x and y, and then solve for y, we get another equation that has to be in our string art, namely for this blue string. But it actually goes a bit deeper. If we take any strictly monotonic function whatsoever described by this art, then when we swap x and y, yep, you guessed it, you are guaranteed to get a function that's also true. Our crude example of seven strings has a segmented looking curve. So here, if we had added more and more strings to our project, we would get this nice convergence to a smooth curve, the one that we want. But it would be hard to figure out the formula of this curve with all those crisscrossing lines. So let's go back to the crude example. I'll show you what I mean. So we don't care about crossings below the curve. For example, we don't care where orange crosses blue, that's way inside here. Orange and blue aren't rainbow neighbors, and neither are all these. However, we do care where red crosses orange, orange crosses yellow, yellow crosses green, and so on. Those crossing points don't look exactly like where the envelope curve would be, but that's because we're only using seven strings. If we used a ton of strings, the collection of all the neighboring crossing points becomes the curve that we're after. So, how do we solve for the crossing of a pair of neighbors? Each string crosses the x and y axes, and we know where. And so we can write down a formula of a line for each string in two-intercept form. Recall the two-intercept formula. It's x over a plus y over b equals 1. We apply it to the yellow and green strings. The intercepts always add up to 6. So 4 plus 2 equals 6, 3 plus 3 equals 6, and so on. Which is 1 less than our 7 strings because we started counting at zero. The yellow and green strings are neighbors, so the green is a little bit steeper. Its x-intercept is one less than for the yellow string, and its y-intercept is one more than for the yellow string. So a minus one, then a plus one. We solve the yellow equation for y, and then we solve the green equation for y, and now combine them. So now everything is in terms of x, and we solve for x, which is now two. So we plug this 2 into the yellow equation to get y equals 1. That's good enough. But it's a good check to plug it into the green equation as well. And here we get y equals 1. Great. And there it is. We have one point where yellow and green cross. So good work so far. But what about all the other crossings? Do we just repeat all those other cases? Well, fortunately, there's a shortcut. We can do them all at once. So prepare for the next level of abstraction. Until now, a plus b equals 6, because we have 7 strings. But I need a large number of strings. Let's call this large number, hmm, capital N. 
so that a plus b equals n. And although I'm using yellow and green boxes, the following applies to any neighboring pair of strings. From our two-intercept form, a is the x-intercept and b is the y-intercept. I'm going to relabel these with the values x0 and y0, where x0 plus y0 equals cap n. This will help us later when using symmetry. And then I apply it to the yellow string. This is actually the wrong way, but for now I'll show you the wrong way first in order to motivate the right way. You'll see why in a moment. The green neighbor must be labeled with the following intercepts. So that the green x-intercept is one less than the yellow x-intercept. And the green y-intercept is one more than the yellow y-intercept. Just like before. We solve yellow for y and then solve green for y, and then combine them. And now to find x0, I'll explain y in a moment, and I'll save time and skip to the solution. We chose the positive solution because x0 is positive, like all the string intercepts. Originally I thought I could swap x's and y's and get another formula, but I was wrong, so I had to redo this video. How? Well, when I solved for x instead, we get a slightly different solution. See this one has a negative 1 instead? And so it doesn't match the symmetric counterpart. So where did I go wrong? So let's return to the previous slide. The problem was my choice of x0 and y0. They aren't actually symmetric counterparts. In fact, they are both preferentially biased to the yellow, shallower string. In this way, we have broken the symmetry and can't use it. Instead, let's redefine x0 and y0 to be the values halfway between their corresponding yellow and green intercepts. And so x0 and y0 are no longer intercepts, but are halfway values. And now we can write the yellow equation with these shifted intercepts, and the green equation with these conversely shifted intercepts. It looks strange, I know. But here's the payoff. Notice that again the difference between green and yellow intercepts is negative 1 and positive 1, like before. But the best part is that if you swap all the x's and y's in yellow, you get the green and vice versa. So that green and yellow are now written in symmetric form in x and y. And now we are ready to go. This will get a little messy before it gets clean, but we can solve this. Solve yellow and green for y. Combine equations. Cancel these y0 terms. Now swap these two terms. Both those one halves combine to give 1. And now factor out the x. And we simplify the compound fraction in square brackets. The denominators are different, and so we multiply top and bottom by the other one to make like denominators and combine into one fraction. We can write the denominator as a difference of squares while half the numerator vanishes. So two negatives become a positive and while the numerator becomes x0 plus y0 but remember what that is? Capital N which we plug in now we can multiply out the denominator and get the x0 by itself and pick the positive solution. So what a leap, but how simple the result. And yes, now by symmetry we could swap both x's and y's and get another true formula. If you are curious, as a challenge, you can go back a couple of slides and solve the yellow and green for x to get this formula. So the symmetry argument is a kind of shortcut if we use it properly. But wait, why did we solve for x0 and y0? It was with the intention of getting rid of them, because remember the sum x0 plus y0 is cap n. So this is the exact solution for all n, but we are not done, because if n gets very large, the n times x is even larger, right? And that one quarter is negligible in comparison, so there is a sense in which we can cancel it out with impunity. I'm sure you're used to canceling things out in pairs like we did in algebra, 
But in calculus, we do this all the time. And now we can divide out the square root of n on both sides. And there it is. For a large number of strings, n, we have the square root of x plus the square root of y equals the square root of n. What an exquisite result, right? And it's symmetric in x and y, as we expect. So let's plot some strings. Notice that the exact formula passes through all our crossing points. However, our large n result does not. And yet, we see something curious. It appears that our large n approximation does not pass through our neighboring crossing points because it is tangent to all those strings. And in this case, looks are not deceiving. That's a second challenge for you. Prove that this is the case and be the first to leave a comment. But I promised you that this is a parabola. So how do we do that? If we rotate our string diagram by 45 degrees, the envelope sure looks like a parabola, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to mathematically rotate our curve equation? There is. So again, we just found this formula for the envelope curve. We want to find the equation for this green rotated curve and show that it's a parabola. Don't worry if you haven't seen a matrix before. Please go with it. It's a way of solving several linear equations together. Very powerful. I'll start us off with a simple 2 by 2 one. In red, we have old points x and y, and with this tiny 2 by 2 matrix of numbers, we can rotate that point around the origin to get new green points. We can do this with all the x, y points in our curve. First, theta is 45 degrees, so luckily cosine of 45 and sine of 45 equal 1 by rad 2. Then we can factor the 1 by rad 2 out. The new green is by itself on the left hand side. We can get the old red on the left hand side by finding the inverse of the matrix, assuming it exists, and the green and the red switch places. So here the inverse looks just like the original but with a minus sign moved around. Now we can get rid of the matrix and write two equations as normal and plug them into our envelope curve. And now we have a new envelope curve in terms of the new green points. Nothing to do but tidy up. We square, we factor, cancel, and distribute, and all the usual stuff. And that's it. Our rotated curve is a parabola. I first encountered this pattern in my sixth grade math class on, the, on a cardboard hanging up on the wall all by itself and I would periodically drift off and stare at it. I think it was a ploy from my teacher, Mr. Zapata, to figure out who the inquisitive students were. Well, if so, mission accomplished.